it's time for the cut and buff video. I'm going to take and uh, show you the process I use for how I cut and buff a car. This is the car I painted in the last video about a week ago. And I'll show you what that's all about. This is the rear quarter that I'll be showing you in this video that I'll cut and buff. The paint job didn't come out quite as great as I wanted. I had a little bit of trouble with um, the gun the whole time. So a little bit more orange peel in here than I really wanted. But it's not terrible. And you'll see that when it's all done, it will be perfect or close to it. These are some of the products that I really like to use. It's uh, There's quite a bit to it, but it's really not all that bad. You're going to want a couple various sanding blocks. This is a 1000 grit sanding block. It's already got the paper attached to it. Uh, some of these are just different wet sanding blocks that you put your own paper on. All different kinds. I'm going to be using 1000 grit to start. That's what I'm going to be using to really flatten the surface right out completely. I'll be using 1000 grit to get rid of all imperfections. And then from there on, I'll only have to sand out the 1000 grit marks. <clears throat> so here I have 1500 for uh, a hand paper. And I've got 1500 for the DA. And I'll be using the DA with 1500 everywhere I can. And by hand, anywhere I can. Then we have 3000 grit paper. That'll also be for the DA. We have Meguiar's, uh, this is a really heavy cut. That'll be for the buffing compound. Here's the uh, medium cut. And then the swirl remover, which is a extra fine cut. And it'll look pretty shiny even after this one, but it'll progressively get better as it goes have microfiber towel, a whole bunch of them. There's only one there. Spray bottle. There's a little bit of soap mixed into that. Here is the uh, the pad I'll be using for the, the heavy cut. And here's the pad I'll be using for the medium cut. And I'll probably wash this pad out and use it again for the swirl remover. And so, this is what I have. Um, Meguiar's for buffing compounds I've been extremely happy with. All these three are paint safe or paint shop safe, meaning that you can literally buff your car with this stuff and then paint right over it. It leaves no wax residue, nothing like that. Um, and I'm really, I've always really liked 3M paper. I've tried the 3M compound process, but for some reason I just didn't like it. It just didn't work right for me. And then when I switched to Meguiar's, it was just... An amazing difference. So this is what I have. I'm gonna mask off some areas of the rear quarter so I don't get buffing compound and sand and goo all over the place and then I'll uh, set up the camera and show you a little bit about how you wet sand. All right so I'm ready to do some wet sanding. I already sanded the top here because that wasn't gonna make a very good video. So I have this block here it's sort of a some semi-rigid block, it's kind of hard. That'll keep it nice and flat. I'm going to be doing this whole area here. Anything below this line, well, basically this line down, is going to be all machine sanded only, and that's going to be done with the 2500 and 3000, I mean 1500 and 3000. Up here I'm starting with the 1000 grip. And I have a clean bucket of water here. I'll be using to keep my uh, my paper nice and clean because it, it could get gummed up, but wet sanding, you don't really have that problem too much. So one thing that's extremely important when you go to do this, you want to stay away from any sharp edges because you'll cut through. If you cut through the clear, you're screwed. This area here, I'm going to sand up to it, but I'm going to try not to spend a lot of time here. Um, in here, I'll grab a softer block to do. This edge, I'll hit pretty lightly, and from here down, like I said, machine only. Um, when you're sanding, I'll show you. I 
I always try to sand so that the edges of the paper are going in this direction. Find if you sand like this, where you have your paper folded, will tend to try to cut in on those edges, and you don't want that. And also, you want to go in a cross motion. So you start going one direction. your paper nice and wet so it cuts really good. Don't drop it on the dirty floor. So you're going to go all in one direction like this and then you're going to switch directions and go the other way to have a nice cross cut like this. So now I'm going the opposite direction that I was that I started going in. You want to make sure you get all your work done in the 1000 grit. You don't want to be trying to sand out orange peel or imperfections with the finer grits because it's just going to be a lot harder to do. So try to take your time with the 1000 grit. Get everything just as you want it. Grab my rag here. And then when you go to the finer grits, it'll just be that much easier to, to get a nice finish. You want to work on the, the fine grits very hard. So that actually doesn't look too bad. Looks like I got most of the orange peel out. Kind of staying away from the edge here. You don't have to get right up close to edges. I've got that masked off just so all this crap doesn't go running into the uh, door jam. The stuff's kind of a pain to clean up. You can see up in here I could do a little better job. I have a soft block already that I was using for up here. But I'll just come across here, clean that up. As, it, as you dull it out, you can kind of start seeing, you know, just how good of a job you're doing. Because the areas that you didn't sand will still be shiny, and they'll really kind of stand out. And so, um, it's, it's important to dry it off every now and then. See how you're doing. Like, I can see right here, some orange peel where I didn't do a very good job sanding it off. Like I said, the biggest fear in doing this is going through the clear coat. If you go through the clear coat, it's bad. You don't want to do it. <laughs> Let's just say that. Uh, I've had really bad experience with doing that. The biggest problem I've had was if you go through the clear coat, you have to re-clear it. And if you're lucky, that's it. But if you went through the clear, usually you'll go right into the primer. And these chemicals, they don't dry up. They don't release all their, their gases that quickly. So there's still some trapped in there. So then when you go through the primer and you go and you try to put new paint back on, sometimes you'll get what I call alligator. And that's where you'll spray on a new coat of paint to cover up that primer. And all the paint will just start kind of wrinkling up. And when that happens, you basically need to leave the car alone for a couple months, I guess, for, all, for everything to really dry up. Sand it all back out, let it all kind of sit there for a long time. Or strip everything on that whole panel to bare metal because if you try to feather off that where it started to do the alligator wrinkle, you'll notice that every single time you put on another coat, the edge you feather to starts doing the same thing. And you'll just kind of chase that right across the whole panel. So, moral of the story, don't sand through the clear coat. Simple. I find that this information is out there, but I don't find a lot of good complete videos, so hopefully this video helps help somebody out there. We'll see. And if you, you think I'm doing a terrible job, you don't like the way I'm doing it, leave a comment. I can take criticism, or I can tell you you're wrong. But you might be right. We'll see. If you haven't watched the other 
the other videos I made where I started this project, go ahead and watch those. It was ones where I was starting to show uh, a little bit about how I go about using a glyco to try to find low spots in, in bodywork. There's some information there about using an airboard to try to make a surface nice and flat. Um, admittedly, this car wasn't ever supposed to be perfect, so I didn't take everything all the way, but try to do a good job. Sound like somebody has shot a cannon. I can almost feel it. Living out in the sticks, you never know what people are doing. They might be firing off a cannon. <laughs> As long as they don't fire to my way, I don't really care what they do. This process can be used on a brand new car. I don't know if you, how many people watching this realize this, but the paint job that comes through on a factory car sucks. It's full of orange peel. That was never really their goal to get rid of it. It's, people don't notice it. They're looking at all the options on a car, you know, all the, it's got navigation, heated seats, all that stuff. You're not really looking that closely at the paint, but if you ever start paying attention, you realize your car is full of orange peel. And for some reason, I don't know if it's the paint process they use or what it is, but the uh, I've noticed the foreign cars, like Toyotas, Hondas, tend to have even more orange peel than some of the American-made cars. Maybe that's not the case anymore, but it used to be. Oh. But, so you could actually, if you really, if you bought a nice brand new car and you wanted it to be an you know, amazing paint job on it, you could just do this process. Just cut and buff that car and make it look like a show car paint job. Because the rest of the paint's fine, it's just it needs, it needs to be buffed out. Alright, so... Ready to start machine sanding with the 1500. You'll see, seems like there's not even sandpaper here. It's so smooth. This is where the spray bottle will come in handy. I've already sanded the whole top in 1500. I did this groove and this groove in 1000 and then 1500 so that that's already done for me. I don't have to go back to that. I'm gonna start the bottom so that I don't have to keep cleaning up the slurry that runs down, and we'll see how this goes, so. Spray a little bit right on the pad. Spray the area I'm gonna work on. Get this extra thick foam on here, makes it really soft, so it won't like go to dig into an edge, because if you tried with a regular pad on here on DA, you came up into this edge, the wheel, is hard and it's going to be trying to dig into that. It wants to only be on a flat surface. But that pad allows you to kind of be able to roll into some of these, these radius areas. It's kind of nice. One thing that's important when using a DA is anytime you can, you want to be keeping it flat. You don't want to be tipping it and you know, digging into an area, it can be tempting sometimes when you see like an imperfection, you're like, you're never gonna get there going flat, so you wanna kinda of dig in. I recommend you don't. Um, just sand that area out as good as you can. That's about all I'm gonna do on that. I did all the hard work with the 1000 grit and I made sure I tried to get rid of almost everything I could, every grit from then on is just that much easier. And it doesn't hurt that it's a machine sand instead of hand sand, but 
You don't have to spend a ton of time. You just want to sand out any 1,000 grit sand marks, which you can't really see, but that's what you're doing. <laughs> all you have to do. It doesn't take a long time. dry cloth, do the 3000 grit, which I'll even do that up here, because like I said, it doesn't cut in that strongly, and uh, dry it all up, and then we'll be able to buff it. So it's the 3000 grit, and it's actually got a foam pad of its own, it's probably one of the reasons why it's so expensive, it's um, it's really good stuff. Works awesome. Like I said, it's probably not that necessary, but I do like to use it. So, let's get started. Again, I'm going to start at the bottom, work my way up. You might actually be able to hear this kind of cutting. The, the diamond, even though it's 3000 grit, it, it does cut in. <laughs> shiny again just from the 3000 grit. Not like a high gloss but there'll be a gloss there. I think from uh, this point I'll probably speed the video up and you guys can watch me sand the whole thing out. actually starts to really shine up when you start buffing it. Um, you can actually see where it, at an angle it already looks really shiny just from that 3000 grit. This is where it's time to use the heavy cut. So this is a damp pad. This is a, it's a DA orbitable, orbitable polisher. Just put a couple dabs on it. Go to work. Hopefully you can see that in the video. It's extremely glossy. It's really, really good. So I'm going to go ahead and Finish buffing this out with the rough cut, the heavy cut, then the medium, and I might not do the swirl remover in this video because I'll probably do that in the whole car at the same time, but after I'm done I'll take the camera around and I'll do a close up of it to show you what I got. Alright, 
two stages are done. There's still one stage left, but like I said, I'm going to leave that till the whole car is done. I hope you can see just how nice and flat this panel is. There's like no orange peel left. It's nice and shiny. There's no wax at all on this. This is just, just buffing it out. And I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something. Thanks for watching.